Today I'd like to discuss a state-of-the-art 1961 6-meter AM transceiver made by Clegg Labs. Clegg made uh, quite a number of different units for 6-meter amateur radio operation and 2-meter amateur radio operation and other equipment as well. I picked this one up in the 90s at the Dayton Ham Fest and these units are still available as collector items and in fact some people still use them on the air today. They are quite uh, fascinating uh, radios to collect using uh, state-of-the-art point-to-point wiring, which was all done in the 1950s and 60s before integrated circuits were commonly available. Uh, in fact, they weren't even available for integrated circuits until the late 60s in any, uh, of any consequence. Looking a little closer at some of the uh, components down here, we see the tuning control the send-receive switch, the volume control, the multiplier tuning. These are the transmitter tuning controls over here, the load and the plate for tuning. This is the way we tuned a uh, tube-type transceiver. Unfortunately, I don't have the full uh, operating uh, cable for this to operate it, but it's a, probably an operating unit. You can get lots of information about the Clegg Labs radios on the Internet. You just do an Internet search on Clegg and you can find an awful lot of information. Uh, this radio is a fascinating radio in many respects. I want to talk a little bit about the crystal, which was part of the frequency determining uh, device. In fact, it was a frequency determining device for the transmitter. This radio had a tunable receiver to tune the lower two megacycles of the six meter amateur band, but the transmitter was controlled by a single crystal, piezoelectric crystal, and you can plug in different crystals. Here's the plug-in socket for the crystal. Here's the crystal out of its socket. Now the piezoelectric crystal is basically a quartz crystal and if you warp the crystal a little bit it produces a voltage. Uh, also if you put it across a tuned circuit and apply a voltage it will oscillate at a very stable frequency so it was used to determine the frequency of the transmitter. It's a mechanical, electromechanical device and a very fascinating thing about the piezoelectric effect, <clears throat> I said that if you squeeze or warp the crystal, it produces a voltage. I've just seen recently that uh, people are making battery substitutes for cell phones now using the piezoelectric effect and putting it just in your pocket where the vibration of your heart and breathing and so forth produces a small current charging the uh, little rechargeable battery in the cell phone and keeping it going. So the new use for piezoelectric uh, device, it can produce a very small amount of current, but over a period of time it averages out to be a lot of current. Here's the inside top uh, section of the 6 meter transceiver built 1962. Here we see the speaker, the meter, tubes, it's a nine tube unit. Uh, some of the tubes have more than one function, so it has more than nine active components, but not like an integrated circuit that may have thousands or millions of transistors. The power transformer which produces ultimately several hundred volts plus a low voltage. A modulation transformer needed for the AM operation, amplitude modulation. Tuning capacitor back here to change frequency. This unit operated 6 meters which is around 50 megacycles in frequency and it only ran a few watts of output power. Very low power. Some of the tubes were shielded with these metal cans over them a shield and it did exactly what it says. It shielded the tube activity, the electronic activity in there from the surrounding components. Notice some of the tubes required a shield and some did not. Here's the bottom side showing most of the discrete components versus integrated circuit where the, all the circuits are integrated on a piece of silicon several millimeters square. These are discrete components, resistors, capacitors, here's a capacitor, transformer, diodes, inductors, and uh, there's about 150 components in this unit. A modern uh, radio made with a couple of integrated circuits, small handy talkie, for instance, it would do far more than this, may have several million components, highly sophisticated circuitry, but this worked and was a state-of-the-art, all handmade point-to-point -point wiring where each point was soldered individually. And we'll take a closer look at some of those components. 
Here's a little closer look over in the uh, transmitter section. We see an inductor, another inductor, uh, a, tr a resistor, down here is a capacitor, and here you see the bottom of the tube socket with the point-to-point -point wiring. And um, this is uh, state-of-the-art, 1961-1962, handmade point-to-point -point wiring.